that test subject brat. This was Hephaestus's first impression of the new Helios. He first saw him, not at Black Swan headquarters, but on a TV along the side of the road. A young, blonde man with smiling blue eyes was singing an English song on stage. The camera turned to the audience, and the fans were waving their light sticks and screaming. Even the director and judges were charmed by his performance. Attracted by his intoxicating voice, pedestrians also gathered in front of the TV, mesmerized by the shiny image. Hephaestus stared coldly at the hysterical crowd. He understood all too well how much power this fake fanaticism would eventually yield, which was the exact reason Black Swan decided to promote the idol, Kiro, to the public. Tch, what's so great about singing and performing? Bored, Hephaestus frowned and left. But his impression was soon to change. The dark alley wasn't the nicest place for a walk, especially after the rain. Dirty water mixed with blood formed uneven puddles, and every step made an unpleasant, sticky sound. Hephaestus called his crew in to take care of the mess, then eyed the silver-haired young man who had just emerged from the shadows. Is it done? Helios pulled out a flash drive and tossed it to him. It's all there. Well, it seems the new Helios is much better than I expected. Hephaestus examined the tiny gadget in his hand. Looks like we'll have an easy time working together. He extended his hand to Helios. Excuse me for not introducing myself. The name's Hephaestus. But don't call me that. It's too difficult to pronounce and even I don't enjoy hearing it. Helios glanced at the dark-skinned man before him. The man wore a friendly smile, but his eyes had the look of an eagle in search of its prey, instinctively putting Helios on edge. He nodded, but didn't take Hephaestus' hand. Sorry, got blood on my hand. Hephaestus nodded in assent and took a step sideways. Are you headed back to HQ with me? I've still got something to do. Helios had no intention of continuing the conversation and turned to leave. Watching Helios as he walked away, Hephaestus said abruptly, I heard a song of yours. Helios paused and turned around. I don't have much appreciation for music, but I know it's a good song. Hephaestus smiled playfully. But it's scary to think that the man who wrote such a sweet and gentle song can also commit such atrocities with the blink of an eye. Helios's expression remained unchanged. You done talking all that nonsense? You call that nonsense? I was just reminding you. Hephaestus took a step back. Now that you've returned to the darkness, stop longing for the light. Helios lowered his eyes, then suddenly locked his gaze on Hephaestus his golden eyes sharp as blades. For one split second, the intent to kill was evident, but was suppressed in an instant. Let me also remind you, mind your own business. Of course. Hephaestus waved the flash drive at him. Don't worry. You and I are on the same team. Helios ignored Hephaestus's friendly gesture. He turned to leave the alley, and never looked back. Tch. Hephaestus added another word to his impression of Helios. That difficult test subject brat. Hephaestus never bought into the idea that Black Swan was infallible. There were already signs of internal conflict seventeen years ago, and the successive desertion of Hades and later Ares was merely the trigger that blew open the rift. While Black Swan appeared perfectly intact, the undercurrent surging beneath the surface had long been divided into two forces, each with their own objectives. It didn't take long for Hephaestus to choose a side. After all, the idea of a new world appealed to him far more than the maniacal plan conceived by Hades. So he made his decision despite the need to align himself with that difficult test-subject brat. 
Ilios had chosen his side a lot sooner than Hephaestus, and he had become increasingly more active as the lead member on the project. To him, Kiro had become a burden that should have been discarded long ago, but reality suggested otherwise. As the limousine drove out of the stadium, the crowd became a blur in the falling rain. Only their light sticks remained visible in the night. Love you, Kiro! Hephaestus peered out of the window and sighed. <sighs> I never understood why you performed at that comeback concert. It was nothing but a bad joke staged by a knoll. All you had to do was get rid of him. Why do the concert? Kiro's return to the entertainment industry deserved a headline, and even within Black Swan it made waves. But considering Helios's status as the leader of the organization, no one dared discuss it openly. Hephaestus, however, was different. He and Helios had been partners since the beginning, so he enjoyed testing the boundaries before any serious conflicts could arise. Or did you make a comeback simply because you enjoyed being a star? Watching those girls scream for you must be pretty fun, huh? Shut up. That angelic smile that had adorned his bright face moments ago had disappeared. Without looking up, he continued to type on the keyboard. Ah, I see. Hephaestus had a sudden realization and grinned. It was for your little friend. The sound of the enter key was deafening. Helios calmly examined the calculations displayed on his screen, his eyes narrowing. I have my own agenda. Stay out of this. I didn't mean to interfere. It's just small talk. I get bored during these car rides. Hephaestus turned the steering wheel and drove onto the main road. Actually, I need to thank Kiro for the invite to the ball. Helios didn't respond. He stared quietly out the window. Raindrops slid across the glass, splitting his reflection into countless fragments. For that brief moment, he felt as though he was no longer Helios, nor Kiro. They didn't speak again until the skyscraper loomed before them. It stood alone in the night, like a predator awaiting its prey. Helios said in a low voice, since we're playing it low-key this time, I'll go in on my own. You wait outside. No problem. Hephaestus gave his final warning. Leto has played almost all his cards. A man that crazy can do anything at the ball. If you're going to escort the queen in, be sure you can get her out. Of course I will. Helios replied. Like you said, everything we do is for the new world and the queen is essential to the new world plan. Hephaestus smiled. All for the new world, huh? Yeah. He hit the brake. It's almost time. Go. Don't keep her waiting. The rain had finally stopped. Fifteen minutes had passed since Helios and the queen had entered the ball. But the fans and reporters had no intention of leaving. Hephaestus continued to wait in the crowd, as he hadn't received any further instructions. Every now and then, someone nearby would talk about the superstar and his lovely dance partner. Ah, oh, too bad I couldn't see her face. I may have taken a picture. Ah, <laughs> uh, she's blocked. Oh, I want to be Kiro's dance partner! Hephaestus smirked. Inside the hall, the war had probably already begun. Still, ordinary people cared only about such trivial things. He couldn't decide if it was ridiculous or just plain sad. Suddenly, a scream came from inside the hall. What's going on? What happened? Reporters rushed toward the hall like vultures, but a group of uniformed men appeared out of nowhere. They quickly sealed off the building and began forcing their way inside. And W is here too? As Hephaestus tried to analyze the situation, a brief command came in over comms. Leto was on the move. Are you okay in there? Wasted a little time on Anol's tricks. 
It sounded like Helios was running. He turned into Leto and distracted everyone. Don't worry about what's going on in here, just wait out there. No problem. Through his earpiece, Hephaestus could hear the vague screams of the guests inside. He knew the situation wasn't as simple as Helios had made it out to be. As he slowly backed away, he relayed his intel. By the way, N.W. will be forcing their way in soon. <sighs> Did you know that already? Hephaestus was slightly surprised, but he soon understood. If Leto was going down, N.W. and the Special Task Force would want to immediately cut ties with him. Everyone was chasing their own goal in this chaos, and he was bearing witness to the whole event. Hephaestus quickly took advantage of the confusion and disappeared into the crowd. He hadn't been waiting long at the rendezvous point before Helios emerged from the woods. His hair was no longer blonde, but gave off a silver glow that shimmered like stardust in the moonlight. He appeared almost unreal, and only the dried blood on his face served as a reminder that he wasn't an elvish prince from fantasies but a demon from hell. Is it finished? Leto's escaped, but he won't get far. Helios replied. He's got nowhere to go. Yeah. Let Special Task Force worry about how to end this. Our goal has already been achieved. Hephaestus then asked. Where's the queen? I sent her home. Helios thought for a moment, and finally decided to share his intel. Her power has increased considerably since she got her evil back. We don't have much time left. I see. Hephaestus opened the car door and gestured for Helios to get inside. Where to next? To the temporary headquarters. As Helios entered the car, Hephaestus noticed something unusual. The rain had stopped a while ago, and yet Helios had little water stains on his shoulder. They appeared to be tears. Leto had nowhere to hide. Thanks to the Queen's first-hand news report and the live videos uploaded by Key, Leto's true nature was exposed to the public. Of course, Black Swan was also apprised of the news. Quite a few members of Black Swan were on standby at the temporary HQ. They were keeping their distance from one another but the center of attention would always be that silver-haired young man. No matter where he was, he would always be the brightest light. I've got three bits of news. One good, one bad, and one neither good nor bad. Which one would you like to hear first? Just say it or shut up. I faced a sighed as he leaned against the wall. Then I'll start with the neither good nor bad news. Artemis was also at the ball, and she was pretty badly injured. Helios showed no emotion, even after the news of Artemis's injury. She has nothing to do with us. True. I'll give you both the good and the bad news together. Good news is, Special Task Force has already surrounded the orphanage, so no matter what Leto does, he's done. Bad news is, he's holding the orphans hostage. He's demanding that the Queen come alone, or he'll kill all the children. Hephaestus deliberately paused. Aren't you worried about the Queen? Helios's countenance appeared to soften at the mention of the Queen, but soon regain his cold demeanor. After a moment of silence, he replied briefly. I believe in her. Believe? Hephaestus responded thoughtfully. True. If we don't believe in her, there's no point in continuing our plan. There was just one thought he kept to himself. If the Queen had already regained her power, this would be the perfect opportunity to observe her true potential. Hephaestus glanced at the giant device behind him. It looked out of place, particularly in the dark and gloomy environment. If the reset plan had been Hades' solution, then this device was the answer to their master plan. Hephaestus asked in a low voice. When do we begin the next step? 
Someone else will take care of it. Someone else? Please tell me it's not me. I'm no good at this type of precision work. Of course it's not you. Helios glanced at the time. He'll be here soon. Ten minutes later, the door was pushed open, and that someone else entered the room. Hephaestus never expected to see Ares, the traitor of Black Swan, at the temporary HQ. Like everyone else, he was shocked for a moment. But he soon calmed down upon noticing Helios's unsurprised expression. Who would have thought that Ares would be the one to take care of the next step? Helios and Ares must have been conspiring for a long time. Maybe since the ball. No, even earlier. Hephaestus began to suspect that even Ares' betrayal had been part of their plan. He watched as the man in black approached Helios. His palms began to sweat, but his lips curled up into a smile. Who cares? Whatever deals they had going under the table... As long as they achieved their goal, he didn't mind the return of Ares. He gave a light cough and expressed his newly formed attitude. <clears throat> Welcome back, Ares. Leto had disappeared. Hephaestus was slightly surprised when he heard the news, but it was perfectly logical. As a member of the New World Plan, he had always believed that the power of the Queen was the key to their New World. However, nobody knew what future awaited them behind those doors. Leto was merely a small test to observe the Queen's progress. But when she was able to fully unleash her power, Hephaestus turned his attention to the photo in his hand. Initially, he had only done some minor digging. He had been curious after seeing the tear stains on Helios's shoulder but the result had proven to be quite interesting. The photo contained the image of a couple in a warm embrace. They looked just like any other couple on the street, except for the man's eye-catching silver hair. The girl was looking up at the man, smiling brilliantly, and in the man's eyes was a passionate deep affection that could not be an act, but genuine and pure love. Even an outsider like Hephaestus could see the bond between them. So that's it, Hephaestus murmured. That's why you asked me to stay out of it at the amusement park and insisted on taking her to the ball. No wonder you believe in her. Hephaestus once believed that loneliness was Helios's true nature, and the passionate and brilliant Kiro was nothing but a mask. But he completely changed his point of view after seeing the tear stains on the silver-haired man's shoulder that night, as well as the photo he held in his hand. It seemed that his impression of Helios could use yet another change. Hephaestus decided that before the New World arrives, he could continue these observations as a leisurely pastime, which would certainly make his role as a bystander more interesting, even as a mere pawn in the game. The noise from the device behind him interrupted Hephaestus' thoughts. As he walked toward it, he felt as though he could see another infinite world among the blinking signals. Hephaestus silently smiled. No matter what kind of precious past Helios and the Queen shared, or what passionate love they once had, the moment they face the truth and the end of evolution, the new world will crush them. And that's the real romance. Hephaestus sighed, then without hesitation, lit up the photo and tossed it into the trash can.